a 66 year old woman who had a minor fall on outstretched hand and she developed a painful swelling around the left wrist. X-ray showed a Coley's fracture. She underwent close reduction and below elbow cast application which healed after 8 weeks. However, 6 months later she had a fall and she developed a pain over the back and inability to stand and walk with pain over the left hip. So with this kind of picture, she continued to have had all this. What do you think she is having? So she is having some falls, she is developing the fractures around the hip, fractures around the wrist, fracture around the possibly around the back. So yes, you would have probably guessed it right. This is osteoporosis, which is defined as decreased in bone mass. Means matrix and mineral both. Mass is matrix and mineral both. Whereas rickets and osteomalacia are the problems of only minerals. Mass is not less. In fact, mass is sometimes more. And this is secondary to uncoupled osteoblast and osteoclastic activity resulting in microarchitectural defects in bone tissue known as osteoporosis. So what is the WHO criteria for osteoporosis? Using the DEXA scan, which measures the bone mineral density by actually two scores T and Z, but we are going to tell you only the T score. If the T score is less than minus 2.5 standard deviation and below, that's known as osteoporosis. So remember, osteoporosis is a quantitative disorder. The whole quantity of the bone is less, whereas osteomalacia and rickets are qualitative disorders where the quality of bone formed is poor. Matrix is fine, minerals are less, whereas in osteoporosis, both minerals and matrix is less. And this is how it looks like. If you see, this is a normal bone, which in which there is a 65% of, which you saw in that one of the flow charts, there's a 65% of roughly minerals and about 30 to 35% of matrix. So in osteoporosis, the whole thing is shrunken, lesser inorganic material, lesser matrix, in rickets and osteomalacia, overall bone mass is fine, but the in a particular area, the matrix is more and inorganic component is less. Whereas osteosclerotic disorders, something like let's say pagets and uh, osteopetrosis, etc., the inorganic component is too much, whereas matrix component is relatively less. How do we classify osteoporosis? So, do we have some types? Yes, there are two types. Type Primary, where there is no underlying cause and secondary. In primary, type 1 osteoporosis is postmenopausal, which happens in women after the menopause. And type 2 is senile, that is age-related osteoporosis. If you look at this figure, this is a normal bone with normal density of the microarchitecture. Whereas look at this, in per unit area, if I let us say divide in 4 quadrants only, in per unit area, the amount of bone is less. The quality may be okay, but the quantity itself is far less. Secondary osteoporosis can happen because of endocrinal causes like Cushing syndrome, hyperparathyroidism, drug induced like corticosteroid, nutritional or sometimes the non-ambulatory patients in which you get the disuse osteopenia. Paraplegia, quadriplegia, okay, there is no use, they just lie in the bed. They don't move around much, so there is a disuse osteopenia. A fractured extremity, which has not been used much for the last few months, gets a disuse osteopenia. Coming to the primary osteoporosis, where there is no underlying cause, type 1 osteoporosis, which is also postmenopausal, it is because of lack of estrogens, and predominantly it affects the cancellous bone loss. Remember, predominantly it affects the cancellous bone loss. Cortical also, but more of a cancellous. And the bone loss is quite accelerated, that is about 2 to 3 percent per year. Mostly vertebra, hip, and distal radius is affected, or you can say mostly the cancellous bones. Senile osteoporosis is a bit slower, it is about 1 percent, 0.5 to 1 percent bone mass per year. Both cortical and cancellous is affected. Hip and vertebral fracture and both in many women above 70 years of age are affected with senile osteoporosis. This differentiation is must because uh, we treat women slightly differently as compared to men because some of the drugs selective estrogen receptor modulator is used in women and uh, hormone replacement therapy 
rather than in men. What predisposes a person for the osteoporosis? The most significant history, if you let's say want to say that this is osteoporotic fracture, the most significant history behind this is if there was a history of rigidity fracture in the past. So let's say somebody who is in 60s, 70s and had a distal radius fracture about 3-4 years back and now if you have a doubt, it could be osteoporosis because she had or he had a history of osteoporotic fracture in the past. Somebody who had let's say vertebral compression fracture or a fractured neck femur in just last 2-3 years back and if now the patient develops a hunch deformity, likely that it's in osteoporosis. Age related, more than 50 years in female and about 60 to 65 in the males. Gender related, females are more prone for osteoporosis. Menopause is one of the significant reason. If there is an oophorectomy, oophorectomy done the, during the reproductive age, that can also cause the osteoporosis and early, very early menopause or late menarche. Habit related, which habits? Smoking, excess alcohol, caffeine or soft drink intake because this, as I told you, this can lead to the phosphate problems. Diet related, a diet which is less thin, low vitamin D or calcium. Drugs like steroids, if they are more than 7.5 mg per day for more than 3 to 6 months can cause osteoporosis. Heparin, very commonly given for many of the cardiac and the vascular causes, can cause hypocalcemia. Diuretics, frusamide causes calciuria, gradually depleting the calcium. And in this era, where everybody wants to be always cheered, immobilized by the century, that is also one of the major risk factors for the osteoporosis. As the, you know, we grow from the age of probably 0 to 30, so we continue to get the bone mass in our body. So I can compare it like this if I am in a room and this room which is bound by the four walls and a roof and a floor can let's say be filled by the cuboidal boxes of one by one by one cubic feet. And let's say for standardization that this room where am I standing can be filled with hundred such boxes and a hundred box fill filled room will be the standard. What will decide that these 100 boxes will be filled here? So this the likelihood that there will be more peak bone mass. So not everybody will get 100, somebody will get 80, 85, 90, 95 and somebody may remain at 40, 45. So are there any factors which affect the attainment of peak bone mass? at the age of 30. So 30 is supposed to be the so-called age where there is a peak bone mass. After that, it's just stabilization up to a couple of years and then gradual decline. More so in women, less in men. Yes, so males, African females have higher peak bone mass than Caucasian females. Physical activity, the more active you are, more PBM one may have. Hormone, the protective action of estrogen continues to give a good PBM levels but after that the PBN starts declining. Smoking, alcohol, sedentary lifestyle leads to lower PBM and poor nutrition leads to lower PBM. So in general you can summarize if I leave the gender part the, the important things are staying away from the habits like smoking, alcohol, caffeine or too much of soft drink intake, a good activity and a good nutritional status decides a good peak bone mass and especially a active lifestyle. A sedentary lifestyle will ensure that the peak bone mass attained at the age of 30 is less. So let's say somebody who has got the peak bone mass of only 80. This is just a number. This room which was supposed to get 100 got only 80. Now one is maintaining the balance of 80, another one is maintaining the balance of 100. So of course 80 balance will reach the critically low peak bone mass sooner than the 100 one. So 100 will take longer time. So if the person is involved in good physical activities right from the childhood, has got good nutritional habits, staying away from the bad habits like smoking, excess of alcohol, too much of caffeine intake or maybe too much of soft drinks, not following a good nutritious diet pattern, likelihood that he will have a poor bone mass. What is the pathophysiology of osteoporosis? Now, you have to understand today one thing. 
osteoporosis largely is not a calcium deficiency disorder and why i brought up this topic here is often you you know the students or you know somebody will ask that shall i take calcium and you know that i will not become osteoporotic not really merely popping some calcium pills is not going to be a guarantee that the person will not develop the osteoporosis because osteoporosis is a far more complex problem what is the problem the problem is it's a balance between blast and clast normally if you see this figure each part of our bone as we do the activities run jump jog sit whatever we do there is a part of the bone which gradually gets damaged the damaged part has to be removed with the help of osteoclast and once the osteoclast remove you can see here the osteoclast will resorb this part after the resorption the osteoblast will come and they will form the new bone and then the bone formation restarts so there is always a balance between blast and clast the clast will remove the damaged bone and blast will come and reform the new bone and this process continues but they only balance the peak bone mass whatever peak bone mass has been attained in general the activity in blast and clast is to maintain that balance higher the balance longer this will go on in osteoporosis what happens beyond a age with the lack of hormonal protection and some other factors gradually the clast will continue to remove the damaged bone or the normal cyclical bone whereas blast will not deposit or replete the same amount of bone gradually leading to decrease in the peak bone mass so i'll go back to the same analogy so let's say in this room we had 80 boxes only and the body is trying to maintain the balance of 80 box so one box gone out that is damaged one box comes in box out box in but the balance of 80 is maintaining after the 40 45 something change let's say it's a women so more and more boxes are going out but less and less boxes are coming in because of accelerated damage because of lack of estrogen protection further it happens in such a fashion that the boxes minimum boxes required for this room strength are let's say 50 and now we have reached the strength of 14 and so we have only 14 and boxes because the same number of boxes are not replenished now this room is prone for damages because we needed minimum of 50 for the structural strength of this room that's what precisely is osteoporosis so here it's an imbalance between bone resorption and bone formation during routine bone remodeling this is a routine bone remodeling process and it's a lifelong process overall 10% of your body bone is always under the remodeling process so peak bone mass is achieved by the age of 30 it's more in the males after 30 the peak bone mass is maintained by regular remodeling process as i told you part is removed part is replaced in females the minimal change in pbm occurs between the age of 30 and menopause but after 30 it's relatively accelerated